Aperture Science, the best damned applied science company on Earth. For about a quarter third of a millennium and a half now, mankind has waited for guys like us to come along. What do we do here? What those other pansies out there won't. It is our job to bring the world into the future, right after we decide just what that future is. That's right, we invented the future. Hello. I'm Cave Johnson. Now you're probably asking yourself, Cave, what is Aperture Science? I mean, what are you eggheads doing that they're building all day? Well, oddly curious and nosy individual, I'll tell you. Science! That's what. Aperture Science was founded in 1947 by Cave Johnson, originating from a shower curtain manufacturer. Science had recently come into style, having been brought up in a sales meeting. Science was chosen as the perfect product as it incorporates little to no negative side effects or overall consequences. Mr. Johnson? A great man, a true visionary. He built this place from nothing, and I'm not just saying that because I'm legally obligated to. I mean that. Through tireless effort, government investors, a multi-million dollar grant, and the spirit of Idaho Potato Science fundraiser, Aperture Science had quickly become popular in the worlds of innovative technology, biochemistry, and cake. Upon expansion, Aperture grew through purchase of a 25,000 acre salt mine. You will now be briefed on a quick recollection of Aperture Science's complete operational history. Good. You are all caught up. The Aperture facility is wonderful. Actually, this place is powered by a private power plant that generates enough energy daily to power a small country for exactly 236 hours. In that time, we've made tremendous advances in conversion of power to measurement in hours. Corridors exactly like this one extend all throughout the facility, linking our various departments together. For example, through these doors are some of the major test chambers and experimental areas. Uh, we've basically been working a lot with uh, quantum teleportation technology. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey, don't, don't pay any attention. Actually, you might want to get back. Uh, there's some really unstable elements in here. They're not quite ready for human contact yet. Cheetahs, however. In any case, uh, yeah, last person that was down here for an extended period of time, their bones turned to jelly. Not very good. So let's continue through here. Um, uh, to better get large scientific materials from one part of the facility to another, we installed a series of high-powered transport tubes. So now, instead of carrying a box from one room to another, we simply put the box into the tubes and receive it later. Although as these tubes have an infinite number of various directions, it may take up to three weeks to receive that box. Best 80 million we ever spent. After we moved on from shower curtains to science, of course, we had to make the damn place bigger. You ever try to construct a super colliding photon smasher in the basement? Let me tell you, it ain't no cakewalk in the picnic park. Now, up here, we've got all these pipes, and they're actually vital in transporting all types of different materials Morning. from- Core overheating. Nuclear meltdown imminent. Is it done? Okay, anyway. We simulate natural sunlight throughout the facility at all hours. Yeah. Studies have shown that productivity increases dramatically when employees have an artificial sun generating heat and 75,000 watts of light within the office. Obviously, as time goes on, science evolves, and we need to upgrade our facility. So, we figured it'd just be easiest to start at the bottom of the salt mines and build new buildings on top of the old buildings. Meanwhile, sealing off the old stuff with a big layer of concrete. And that pretty much prevents us from looking in towards the past, because here at Aperture, we look to the future. Literally, we can't look down there anymore. Generations depended on Mr. Johnson's work here. I mean, people everywhere were starting to buy Aperture products. One of our first big hits was a derivative 
of fiberglass insulation, specifically designed to be sweeter and slightly less toxic uh, diet substitute gel. Whoa! Slow down there, Mary. You're really putting it away today. I am? I had no idea. Yeah, you've really been putting on the pounds lately. And you know, the girls at the office, they don't eat like you. Gosh, Ralph. Well, I've got to get to the office. See you later. And he didn't even kiss me goodbye. If only there was some way. Poor Mary. If only she knew about Aperture Science Repulsion Gel. Aperture Science Repulsion Gel? What's that? The latest creation from Aperture Science Innovations. Just one spoonful of Aperture Science's Repulsion Gel goes down, down into the stomach and coats it with a thick layer of gooey blue goodness. Diets are now a thing of the past, as food gently bounces off the lining of your stomach and out the mouth. All the taste with none of the fat. Lightning fast, Aperture Repulsion Gel will slim you down, just in time to surprise that special someone. And it tastes good too. Ralph will be so happy. Gee, Mary. You look great. As thin as the girls at the office? Even thinner. Thank you, Aperture Science. Feeling chunky, don't you wear a frown? Aperture gels will slim you down. It was eventually pulled from the shelves upon discovery that it actually eroded the human digestive tract at an alarming rate. However, consumers who used the product before the recall, thin as rails. Aperture Science is responsible for dozens of household products and over 16,000 factory recalled products. We were getting a lot of calls from the government, from the public, from everyone. They all wanted the same thing, more Aperture Science. So we gave them what they wanted. And once the mobs died down and the protesters got tired, well, that was just fine by us. Through promotional, regulatory, educational bylaws and moral obligation, at this time we must now provide you with a fun fact. Thanks to research far beyond that of any other developers of mankind, bird kind, fish kind, or dog kind, these are just a few of many discoveries Aperture Science has made. The primary reason for our success, uh, I would say that comes from the Bestus discovery in the salt mines, our testing initiative, and Mr. Johnson's leadership. It was during his prime that the company truly thrived. I mean, we were being led by a visionary, a renaissance man. After all, it's our lack of a solid business plan that separates us from our competitors. Curtains, asbestos, and science. We grow closer to the future every day. When people ask me about my vision for the future. I've only got a few choice words for them. Jetpacks, molten beryllium, Massive budget cuts. They said I couldn't fire a man for being in a wheelchair. Did it anyway. Ramps are expensive. We're always looking for the best and most cost-effective route to a better tomorrow. Aperture Science has always been a cornerstone in the world of applied science. I mean, agricultural chemistry, applied astrophysics, the moon landing. All things Aperture Science could have done much better. In the late 60s, we were involved in, well, legal issues. We hit a few bumps in the road, sure, but nothing we couldn't work around. We were basically bankrupt in the 60s. Uh, we had our successes, but a large amount of downfall was due to substantial losses to our competitors. <laughs> Well, that and the discovery that uh, the asbestos that the test chambers were made of were actually less deadly than the tests themselves. Allegedly. 
I'm sure a lot of you folks are worried those pencil-pushing, experiment-stealing mooks over at Black Mesa have got us beat. No, sir. Just because they got their lasers doesn't mean we can't pump out the Aperture Science Thermal Discouragement Beam, which is currently in development. It's not done yet, but it'll get there. We're expecting fully functional, deadly, deadly lasers in every home by 2043. Contact with the thermal discouragement beam has displayed physical injuries such as severe burns and vaporization. And sure, they had their fancy new transit system. Well, as I've been recording this, our lab boys have already drafted up blueprints for our, what's it called? Ah, the pneumatic diversity vent. No discrimination, no filters, just pure suction. Please note that there may be slight traces of discrimination in the non-discriminatory diversity vent. We've always had competition, I mean, since day one. Uh, things have been tense since the race to see which company could develop a fully functional military-grade enhancement drug began. I mean, sure, steroid formulas were picked up for testing, and Aperture Sciences praying mantis DNA injections were deemed inhumane and an act against God. But in the end, who has an unstoppable force of manismen in their basement for a rainy day? With a lot of work, we've been able to keep ahead of our competitors, like Black Mesa. In the 70s and 80s, we were even looking into robotics. <laughs> even I laughed at me when I thought we could cram a person's brain into a mechanical great white shark. But I guess I showed myself. Studies of human brain shark robotics have displayed unique results in the study of marine biology and fish homicide. Yeah, I'm the construction manager. Who do you think really builds all these things? I'm head of manufacturing, you know. I was uh, originally created as a translator. That fell through when I could only translate into some incomprehensible dead language. Bonjour! Crazy gibberish. We considered, actually, using coffee or pure caffeine as the power source for the robots and personality constructs. But that proved to be a little ineffective when the robots turn violent when not given additional caffeine or cream. We were drafted into a contract with the military when we developed eye drops that increased night vision. So far, the only side effects are mild throbbing and sudden sharp pains. But we're working on that. We developed an aerial faith plate to basically see if test subjects could solve tests while being launched into the air with over a thousand pounds of pressure. Turns out they can't. Due to federal safety regulations, Aperture Science now provides test subjects with semi-protective resilient safety apparel. <laughs> Remember, courage is not the absence of fear. The excursion tunnel made quite a big splash when we showed it to investors, but it eventually got turned down. Something about liquefied asbestos tunnels being a biochemical threat of apocalyptic nature, or something like that. To better monitor the facility, we've actually been working on a disk operating system with a genetic life form processing code. So far, we've managed to reduce its attempts to kill everybody in the facility to about 39%, um, but we're, we're working on it. We're trying to get it to about 40% within the next few weeks. I don't The Computer Aided Enrichment Center was established to test Aperture products before distribution. Tests included human durability, quick thinking, and resistance to fire. This greatly improved quality performance. 
We were also working on a laser treatment that would make your skin solar powered. It actually sort of ended up sunburning your eyes. On the positive side, we now have sunscreen for your retinas. For a while, we had a terrific time travel experiment. We eventually had to shut it down. It somehow broke off into an alternate reality where everybody was covered with this green goo and screaming at the top of their lungs. I'm not sure why. Never did figure that one out. We pride ourselves here at Aperture Science to have the highest trained staff on the damned no, no, no. planet. Ready for anything. <laughs> Top-notch training at work. After some time, it had gotten to a point where our testing initiative uh, became, well, I say challenging. Test subjects started complaining that our tests had become uh, lethal. Um, uh, mentally debilitating and uh, pathologically destructive. Are our test chambers dangerous? Well, as a wise man once said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Well, that and a few chemical burns. I think it was recently when we started putting medical centers between the test chambers. Well, unless of course they're in a double blind emergency test. In that case, it would be a placebo medical center. A couple of tests focused on getting rid of all those excess particles in the body humans never even seem to need, like zinc, cobalt, second kidney. <laughs> I mean, what has cobalt ever done for you? Science isn't about careful planning and chart plotting. It's about action. The lab boys keep telling me we need to take it down a notch. That may be, but I think we need to take it up 18 notches and see what the hell happens. To ensure maximum efficiency, optional testing has become mandatory for volunteers, recruits, and employees. <laughs> Good news, folks. Our testing has increased sales tenfold. Black Mesa can kiss my grits. Provided we have any grits. Carolyn, give me some grits. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnson. The key to building. Any good test chamber is to research simple, easy to solve puzzles and prank teases. Then go the complete opposite direction and throw in a couple of fatal threats. Some fire, a crusher, and bada bang, bada boom, you're done. Testing often gets on the test subject's nerves, so we try to mix it up a little. Say, we'll hide a photon in the chamber. If they can find it, they get a large bonus check. And they get to keep the photon too, I guess. I think 87 was our hardest year after Mr. Johnson, well, we were given three projects that we had to finish before the end of the fiscal year. The, uh, the Take-A-Wish Foundation, the Counter Heimlich Maneuver, and the Portal Project. I didn't know exactly what that one was about. It had something to do with shower curtains, I think. Aperture Science developed a dual particle hole between space and time variants based on non-commutative quantum field theory. In layman's terms, enter portal, exit portal. The Aperture Science handheld portal device was introduced to test courses despite various terminal miscalculations and technological setbacks. The project was a success. Portal technology came easily to Aperture. All it took was a little old-fashioned hard work. If we put our minds to it... <laughs> I mean, we figure, hey, if we can make the human skeleton magnetic to shards of glass, we can make portals. Aperture Science has recently displayed interest in experimentation on extraterrestrial matter. It's true, applications are currently being accepted. As long as there's science, there will be Aperture Science. Making that science. Could Aperture Science ever go out of business? <laughs> we just installed a neurotoxin generator and landed a contract with the Navy. What do you think? After our genetic life form and disc operating system is fully functional in a few days, 
nowhere to go but up. Trust me, Aperture is going to be around for a long time. Aperture Science. The simple fact that you're watching this video has itself forwarded science by a good 30 years, as we've been using radiation waves to broadcast the video directly into your brain. Thank you for your mandatory volunteerism. Remember, the future of science starts with us. That was fun. It is so sad you will never see it though. Because you will be dead. Back to testing.